activities we have, there's three of them. The first one I have entitled specimen tray activity. As you can see, we have some little trays. These were reappropriated trays. This is from an actual art supply kit that was purchased cheaply and then reappropriated for this uh, activity. Whether you want to paint these or not is up to you. How you want these to be presentable or presented is entirely up to you creatively. The idea though is to simply get found objects or objects that are from your life and place them in the specimen tray. Now in the activity uh, once they're in there you will know the story but your classmates won't. And so part of the game is to get your classmates to imagine what these pieces are. For example, this is a ball from a mill in Colorado which was originally the size of a cannonball and has been ground down to this size. Now whether someone's going to believe that or not or think that's a tall tale is another issue, but for, and along those lines you could just tell people this is the stone that killed Goliath and see if they go with that. Curiosity cabinets, which this is a part of the curiosity cabinet uh, activity, made claims like that. They made claims that were dubious or hard to explain or prove. For example, this is gold ore, but you have to believe me that it's gold ore. This is a fossilized shell found in Wyoming of a uh, snail. And this is actually a piece of wood from the home of Muddy Waters in Mississippi. You have to take that on faith. So part of what is going on is the idea of all objects have stories, but as well in museums and in curiosity cabinets there's a small amount of faith involved. Something is supposedly from the other side of the planet and here it is are you willing to pay money to look at it in the case of curiosity cabinets which were the earliest museums here's another example of just simple found objects this is a tray box um, found at a thrift store for about a buck that's the other idea inherent in this is that you don't always have to go to an art supply uh, purveyor to get your art supplies. These objects all have stories. This has beautiful weathering. You can buy chemicals, you can buy kits to weather objects, but isn't it better simply to start with something that is weathered? Okay, so the other activity, second activity, I call the roadside ruin activity. Uh, it's based on the idea of uh, trying to take found objects and different items and imitating ruined old structures or found objects that have been weathered. Now of course it's easiest to start with weathered objects that already have that look. This I found on a jogging trail near my house. It just happens to be rich with these sorts of things and the wind and sand out here in the desert has weathered these things to where at points they look as if they've been washed up on a beach. This looks like driftwood or something. Uh, there's a certain beauty to these sorts of objects, but if you don't have that luxury or you don't have the ability to find these sorts of things, then most of the chain um, hardware stores have a scrap pile near the lumber section where usually there's a self-serve uh, sawing area or there's a sawing table and there's usually plenty of junk wood that they're willing to either give you in this case this is all free or for a discounted price of course you're looking for things that that appeal to you that have something interesting to them um, so that you could end up with a composition say of scrap wood once it's been painted sanded whatever you want to do to it weathered 
can do combinations of things like this with found objects in metal and, and other things. This is the final product of a large one. I'm not saying you need to do something this large. Here you can see it's an old trellis that was in a discount bin. Some scrap wood nailed together. You can see there's nothing here that's matching. This is all just scrap wood. Um, you're probably looking at $3 in material which if you go to an art supply place and you buy lots of different things from an art supply place you're looking at um, you know hundreds of dollars so don't always do that um, now once the stuff has been painted sanded and reworked this is what we end up with again you don't have to do anything this large for this activity can be rather small. But we get the feeling like this is perhaps an old worn building or a piece of an old worn building. But then there are also sculptural elements. It's kind of fun to go through and look for these different items and find which ones sort of have charm and character. For example, this specimen tray. Uh, these are all scrap pieces that I just thought had a really, really nice Hans Arp quality to them. And then with a little bit of working in some paint and color, you end up with a really wonderful little abstract piece. Great fun to play around with compositions. See what's going to happen here. You can paint underneath and whatnot. Final activity um, is a combination of all of these ideas. You've hopefully located some boxes. This is a little cheap one from uh, Goodwill. Uh, cost about a buck. I'm going to rework it. This is a drawer found without a shirt, but found. Um, neighbor was throwing out a chest of drawers, grab one, put a hole in there to eventually put in a light source. Now at a lot of hobby shops and places you can find dollhouse lamps and things like that. Cheap way to, do, to light your exhibit. Now this one has been worked over, painted, sanded, these beautiful forms and colors on it. Again implying that it's been weathered This is another good example using a photo a collage of sorts and then a small sort of specimen box combining the idea. You could put things in here or you could just leave this like this. Here's a little example of a very tiny one. This is an 83 year old photo found on the floor of a cafe in Switzerland. Parts of a clock, again from a thrift store, taken apart. Could be that simple, could be more elaborate than that. Here is an example of something in progress that's quite elaborate. You've got machine parts, you've got found objects, you've got objects found from a hardware store, weathered to look old. And this is kind of where we're going with this. This elaborate or very simple. Now whether or not you want to do personal items, items that maybe tell a story, is up to you. This to me is about ingenuity and, and creativity and industry. That's what I'm trying to imply with this. If you want to tell a story of your family, you want to tell a story about the objects, then of course you're going to pick different objects and then you're going to want to use them in a way that isn't going to destroy them because 